Where up, uh, welcome to a new Comic Crusaders podcast. I'm your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. And as usual, we have an awesome guest. We always land in the, the, the awesome folks that are, you know, going out there and doing their thing. All right. Today, I'm honored to have with us the one and only David Sheftel. Woo! Hey, hey, hey. Where up, uh, what's going on, Mano? How are you doing today? Good, Al. How are you doing, buddy? I am doing fantastic. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I really do appreciate it. You know, oh, yeah, man, you did something really awesome that's coming out tomorrow. Uh, an yeah. awesome little film. You know, this yeah. is why this little podcast is entitled In a Wonderland with David Sheftel because we need to find out what's going on in Willie's Wonderland. Yes, but we'll get, get to that in a bit. All right. Because I do want to show the trailer before we get into that. And then we dig in. But before that, Dave, man, I see you, you've been around the business doing your thing, man, with, with Seth and, uh, on the uh, American uh, Dad, Family Guy, Cleveland Show, voiceovers on video games and all. Dude, a little background, where yeah. you come from and how did you get into this wild world? So I grew up in a little town called uh, Los Angeles, California. So I grew up <laughs> in the hub. And, uh, you know, I, in high school, I was playing basketball and volleyball. Uh, I was playing in a volleyball game. I got the winning point in a game and I uh, did a victory dance that lasted a, a little too long. And uh, that's when the head of the theater department called me in and got me involved in uh, the, the wonderful world of theater. That got me into acting. And uh, I went to college. yeah, so I went to college at Pepperdine. I did uh, 11 shows in the four years I was there. I started oh, wow. uh, studying in Edinburgh, uh, did perform in the Fringe Festival, and then I hit the ground running. So I've been been going at it ever since. That is so, fo folks. There you go. Don't be embarrassed to dance because you never know where to go. Whoa, you never know where to go? Yeah. So that was really cool. Dance, no worries. <laughs> Well, but how, how was that conversation? Hey, you, you could dance. Come over here for a minute. <laughs> Here's what she said. She, I thought I was in trouble when I got called in. And I said, look, I didn't do anything that you think I did. She goes, no, no, no. I'm doing this show. It's called Bye Bye Birdie. And it's basically uh, like an Elvis type character. So I want you to be Birdie. And she goes, if you don't be that character, I, I, won't, I won't do the musical. I'll do something else. I go, wow. Well, how am I supposed to do that? Because I've got sports and then there's rehearsal she goes there's a half hour difference go to all your games go to all your uh all your practices i'll have someone stand in for you you come to the last half hour rehearsal i told the coach he said hey look as long as it doesn't affect uh, uh the games and stuff you're good great so i was going back and forth back and forth and then all of a sudden the coach he stopped playing me and my parents oh. said, what happened i said i don't know they go go talk to him so i went to him and he goes you chose to be in the musical I said, but I haven't changed anything. Why Why would you do that? He goes, uh, you, gotta, he goes you gotta make a choice. So I went back to my parents. I said, what do you wanna do? I said, I wanna go be in the musical. Everybody's nice, everybody's having fun, everybody's singing, everybody's dancing. My dad said, great, go tell that guy to go screw himself. And when nice. your dad tells you to go tell a teacher to go screw himself, you do it really quickly, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so I never looked back, that was the best. Yeah, with your dad behind you like this, most likely, like, go ahead, say something. Yeah, say something. <laughs> awesome. my dad's always been. My parents have both been like, say something, say something. So what was that first big break once you hit? When you say you hit the ground running, I understand that you started rather quickly. You know, you got lucky yeah. quick. So okay. how, how was that first experience and what was it? Well, you, know, you know, when I started, it, you know, I, I was working. I was doing extra work. I got onto some soap operas like Young and the Restless, Days of Our cool. Lives. Got to be on Family Guy, American Dad, Cleveland Show. So that that was a dream come true. But one of the biggest things was a Stephen King miniseries called Bag of Bones. Oh, yeah. Uh, me, which was with Pierce Brosnan, Nika Noni Rose, directed by Mick Garris. So that was one of the biggest things. Oh, wow. And I was like, I can't believe I'm here. So it was fantastic. How is it to write with legends like that? Especially with Pierce. It's been in the business so long. It's been so, business so long. He's awesome. He was my 007. So he was the first 007. That oh, I what? Okay. I we were James Bond. So, and then Anika Noni Rose, we had such great chemistry. She was wonderful. She always looked out for me on set. So she was fantastic. So yeah, to, look, same with on, on Willie's Wonderland. I get to work with Emily Tosta, Beth Grant, and Nicolas Cage. Anytime you get to work with great actors and actresses like this, you just steal what you can. So oh, Absolutely. And folks, we, we got to show you. We must show you what he's talking about before we get into this conversation because this is some dopeness. All right. You guys ready for this? Can't Check worry. it out. Welcome to Willie's Wonderland. Spend the night cleaning Willie's Wonderland, and I will pay to have your car fixed. 
deal. You are officially on staff. Let's get the hell out of here. I can't stand to hear a grown man scream. This place has a dark history. I know the bullshit story they told you. It's a lie. You're here to be a human sacrifice. Have you been listening to a word I've been saying? He's gonna die in here, but he won't listen to me. Machines got out. I just run instead of beat, beating them. <laughs> Nobody is safe. Balls on heaven. We're uh, going to oh, Willie. Who is that? <laughs> She's not trapped in here with them. They're trapped in here with him. It's birthday time. I enjoy a man a few words. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I like that movie. That looks good. That looks intense. Yeah. Insane. Wow. What is going on here? Man, and then I saw you pop up on the scene getting ready to start pumping some uh, lead into some some uh, evil, I hope. Exactly. So, yeah, what, sure. <laughs> so what what's popping? What you know, what can you tell us about the film? And and then obviously your role within it. For sure. So, picture if you will, Nicolas Cage is a lone drifter whose car breaks down in a small town, and the only way he can fix it is if he spends the night in a rundown fun amusement uh, facility, kind of like a dilapidated Chuck E. Cheese. And it just so happens the animatronics may or may not be possessed. So he's going to have to go for that. Uh, it, it, it looked creepy because I, yeah. I, I remember this is Nick Cage, of course, because you know, yeah. I, I see a giant ostrich that looks like that. Come yeah. run up on me. Uh, <laughs> that mob stays there. <laughs> yeah, you probably okay. see my clothes stay there. Uh, you probably see a naked Puerto Rican just running through. <laughs> see, but Nick Cage is the man. That's why he, he can hold the, he can hold his own. No, that's awesome. So what's your role in the film? So I play uh, Deputy Sheriff Evan Olson, and I'm brought in to work with the town sheriff, who's played by Beth Grant, who's an amazing actress. You know her from No Country from Old Men. And, uh, great movie. Yeah, she's a great movie. She's also in Child's Play 2, where she plays Ms. Kettlewell, so she's no stranger to horror. Oh, and okay. so she brings me in for the night. We think it's going to be a quiet night, and then all hell breaks loose. And a guy who knows nothing about what's going on, that's my character, has to jump into action. As you saw, I get thrown that shotgun, and uh, I may need to use it. So, what, what, what was the most fun scene you did in the film, in your experience? You know, it's funny. They're, they were all fun, but getting to work with Nick Cage, I mean, he's so cool. He's a consummate professional. And that I won't spoil anything, but there is a point where I have to tie his character up in the movie. Oh, no. And all I could think about was, like, Man, this is Cameron Poe from uh, Con Air. He's a yeah. bad man. I can't. I, can't <laughs> I hope he doesn't hurt me. So, but no, he's super, super cool. He's the nicest guy, and and he works hard. And it was it was just a blast to work on. Oh man, because again, this is due out uh, February twelfth tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. It, it's gonna be fantastic film. It looks hella fun. Yeah. Again, it reminds me of the Banana Split kind of too, with oh, the animatronic yeah. feel. Yep. You know, but obviously it, it looks like it has an ill gore factor. Is that true? Is that a true fact of this? That film? is a true fact. I can tell you that. It's if you like gore, you're gonna like this movie. If you like horror, if you like Nick Cage, if you like a roller coaster ride, you're absolutely gonna love this film. And I like the fact that I really didn't get much notice about the film. I was starting to get an email. What a new Nick Cage film. Yep. What was do you know if that was something intentional? Kind of like, you know, let's just throw this new movie out there to the world out of nowhere. I think, yeah, that, I think we definitely wanted to wait until it was the perfect timing for it. And uh, I think now is the perfect time. So that's awesome. Yep. I can't, folks, you better tune in. Listen, right now, check out their website, Willie's Wonderland Merch.com. All right. And make sure you're going to look for David on it. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it comes out tomorrow. 
So yeah. let me ask you, I see that you also have something else, Manticore Pictures. So yeah, I just uh, I just started my production company called Manticore Pictures. Congrats, bro. Thank you very, very much. So I'm a member of the Writers Guild. Uh, I'm starting to produce and direct. Uh, I just joined the Writers Guild and I, uh, I'm i trying to do what you do, man. So I'm one of their hosts on their podcast. It's called Third and Fairfax. We interview other writers and my first interview with uh, Judd Apatow is up now. So if you go to Apple Podcasts or anywhere you get your podcasts, you can hear me on the Third and Fairfax podcast chatting with uh, Judd Apatow about his film, King of Staten Island. And that was your first that was my wow. first interview. Yeah, so I got one, wow. of, one of the great whites right out of right out of the right out of the gate. So yeah, and, and saying how was that experience? Then you pop in your podcast, Jerry, with such a big star. How was that feeling? That was awesome. He couldn't have been nicer. He he nice. was so open about his process and how he writes and and how he directs and casts things. And we just had a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And I told him afterwards. I said. You know, I, I didn't want to tell you, but this was my first one. He goes, oh, my God, it seems like you've been doing this forever. So that was nice to hear. Oh, so, that's a great compliment. You really yeah, man. Because you got a good energy to you, man. You could tell you got a good flow. I and mean, come on, man. You did voiceovers on, you know, on, on these Seth MacFarlane shows. Uh, yep. Can you... Which which voices that you do? Are there any memorable moments from voices? So, uh, you know, we do a lot of the back... So me and a bunch of guys, we do a lot of the background voices for any anytime you see people in the town that aren't the main, main characters. We're the ones yelling, you know, screaming, talking to the, uh, talking to the main characters. I've done a lot of chicken fights. So oh, really? <laughs> so we've done a lot of efforts, a lot of chicken fights. Anytime, anytime you hear people going, look out, stay, get away. Any of that, that's, that's, that's me. So I've done oh, a lot word. of that. So okay. I've done a lot of Stewie falling down the stairs. I've done a lot of, uh, you know, ancillary noises and stuff as well. So it's been really fun to work on that show. And Seth MacFarlane, he's the king. He's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the shows, man. That's awesome to know. Honored, bro. Thank you yeah. for, for making me laugh. Because if you did the chicken fight stuff, yeah, yeah, that was hysterical stuff there. The chicken fight is great. And then I'll tell you right now, I'm also on this other show on Facebook, on a Facebook watch show. It's called Rival Peak. And it's kind of like a Sims game mixed with Lost, mixed with uh, uh, Survivor. And you can play the game. I play a character named Christopher Sabun. Sabun is his <laughs> spiritual name, which means soap. He didn't know it until he got his name. Okay. And we're competing for $10 million on the show, but weird and strange things happen on Rival Peak. And then Will Wheaton, he's the host of Rival Speak, which is the after show that talks about the episodes. Okay. So, oh. Yeah, so you got to go to Facebook right now, type in Rival Peak, and watch all the episodes. We're about nine weeks into our 12-week run. So we got three weeks wow. left. And my character is one of the final four. So hopefully Woo! I win. So it'll be great. Oh, um, that's amazing. You keep yourself busy, don't you? Busy, busy, man. Got to. Man, so how do you make, you know, teach folks here, how do you make that type of time? So look, I, you know, it's funny. Everybody says you got to work harder than everybody else in this business. And it's true. But, you know, some people go, well, what does that actually mean? What does work harder than everybody else mean? Got to go to class. Got to, got to, got to keep you know your your craft honed, right? So you got to do acting every day, and then you just got to persevere. But do what other people aren't doing. A lot of people will show up late. Got to be, you know. I was always taught in in college: if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you're fired. So I've always mm. taken that with me. So yeah, you got to work hard. Excellent. Yep. All right. So uh, another question, then, and you know, again, you've done you've, you've done stuff. You know, yep. what was you, one of your greatest learning experiences? You know, coming on up. You know, I'll tell you one of the greatest learning experiences. I was on Bag of Bones with Pierce Brosnan, and it was my first day, and I was really, really nervous. And my first couple of takes, I objectively can say, were really, really bad. And the director came up to me and he said, "Hey, David, you already have the part." So now that you have the part, do what you did. And that just put me at ease and relaxed me and made it so much easier, you know, especially even once I got to this film uh, for Willy's Wonderland, you know what you're doing. You know, as an actor, you struggle to get the part, you're auditioning, you go through a lot of rejection that when you finally get there, you're hoping you don't lose it. But once you got it, you got it. So you got to go do the best work you can and relax. It's funny. You think, all right, it's an intense scene. I got to be intense. The more relaxed you are, the better it's going to be. Gotcha. Yeah, because you know when you caught the gun, you look very comfortable. So, <laughs> so you're putting that handle guns prior on any other projects? Yes, no. 
All no, in real life? No, not, no guns on any projects. I've been to the shooting range. That's about it, but not nothing. nothing <laughs> so, but I have seen a lot of movies, and I have uh, I have pretended a lot. So, gotcha. So, what's a dream project you would love to be on? Is there anything you're like? Oh, you know, whether it's with a particular director, writer, or even as a particular character. Uh, you know, oh, I love three. <laughs> anything superhero. I love. So, I would love to work on. You know. Uh, for voiceover, I would love to be in a DC animated film. I'd love to play Superman. I'd love, he's my guy. Um, you have a voice set for him right now? Well, I think uh, my voice is pretty good as Superman. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> That's my audition if anybody wants it right there. <laughs> so, there, there you go, DC. DC. Man, call him up. Call, hey, hey, call DC, him look. Up. look how easy it is. All you got to do is go to davidsheftel.com. It's right there on the screen. And and hit him up. He's ready. He's ready. So, ready okay. So for Marvel, what would you do? Well, my for Marvel, uh, I definitely want to play somebody they haven't they haven't uh, slipped in yet. I think okay. the mutants are coming. So um, I'd have to I'd have to Hugh Jackman up, but Wolverine. Ah, uh, word. Nice. So I would love to be Wolverine. And then um, you know, a director I would love to absolutely work with. Uh, I've got a huge list, but Spielberg, he's my guy. And Christopher Nolan can do no wrong in my book. So there you go. There you oh, go. Patty, Patty Jenkins. I would absolutely love to work with Patty Jenkins. Look, man, I could see you do, you know, Wonder Woman 3, have a role in there. Why not, bro? Maybe you could be the love interest, you know? That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. awesome. Dude, okay. I, I like this. So, uh, have you done anything else like in video games or anything like that? So I, I play a character called Lucas in Days Gone, which is a song. Oh, Days Gone? Yeah. Oh, Oh, so, well, how did you land? Dude, this guy is all over the place. This is amazing. Very inspiring, bro. Thank so you, man. How, very inspiring. How did you land that that gig in the video game verse? So everything I've done is through an audition. So luckily, yeah. I auditioned for uh, for that, for the role of Lucas. So he's the guy that you come to when you want to trade uh, stuff and, and uh, fix your bike and, and all that kind of stuff. That was an amazing project to work on. And uh, yeah, an absolute blast. Okay, so that leads me with this question then here where, you know, when it comes to auditions, and, you know, what are good avenues for folks to look for those opportunities since you seem to find many of those opportunities? I mean, what, what are the best maybe ways for them to you know also find opportunity like that? For sure. You know, I've been lucky. Uh, you know, you got to get with a good agent, good manager. They, they, they help with the auditions. Is that number one? I would say that's number one for sure. So, you know, I have a wonderful... A wonderful team around me who's helped me get some wonderful auditions, especially with voiceover. And I would also just say, look, there are opportunities out there. Do a lot of short films. I did a lot of short films when I was coming up. Um, make films with your friends. Get your get your voiceover reel together. So there are a lot of ways to do that. And get into class. Class is the best way to do it because you meet other actors who are working on stuff who go, oh, you know what? I got this audition, but really wasn't for me. You'd be great for it. So they can help you and then, yeah, take a lot of classes, a lot of different teachers who have helped me along the way. Like for voiceover, Bob Bergen, he's the he's the, one of the most famous voices. He does Porky Pig. In oh, every, say word. Yeah, and he taught me a lot, a lot of what I know for voiceover. So he's wonderful. Wow. Yep. Wow, you are connected, man. There's a whole web that just keeps going. Hey, maybe you could be a Spider Man too. Hey, hey, I, I like Spider Man. Hey, if anything, if from what I hear from the new Spider Man, we're we're getting a multiverse. Maybe I would love to be another Spider Man. Why not? Absolutely. There's gonna be so many. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait to see what's coming up. Me Let me too. ask you know you know yeah. this is Comic Crusader, so I yeah. have to ask. Yes. Did you ever have any exposure to comic books while young? And if so, what did you pick up? So I picked up, you know, when I was a kid, I did. So Superman's my guy. So I got a lot of Superman comics. Um, obviously, graphic novels. So um, trying to think. You know, I'm, I'm reading Sandman right now while listening to the audiobook. I'm a big Neil Gaiman guy. Um, and then I had Star Wars comic books as well. So I had these Ooh. this great series of Star Star Wars comic books that were in between episode five and episode six, so in between Empire and Return of the Jedi, which all these sort of side quests they would go on, and then in between Hope and Empire. So I, I, I just devoured those. Do you still have those? I do still have them. Oh, they're man, because they are pushing bank now. People are, they are really? looking for those. Yes, because really? within, there's a lot of first appearances there that yeah. you're starting to see within, you know, you're going to see on High Republic or within the shows. I mean, yep. Mando was dope. Man, you know, I can't so. wait to see what with Boba. 
You know, yep. it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. You know, it's Robert Rodriguez at the helm. For me, he oh. can't do no wrong. <laughs> His episodes were awesome. That, that whole show, I, I could just watch back to back. And that finale, oh my God. Well, Look. they got to get you on there too, man. Oh, yeah, that finale that, was intense because once I was like, no, can't be. No. That's um, what I thought. I was too. as you see. Let me tell you, my wife knows I was never the biggest Star Wars fan. But then right. Rogue One came out, I fell in love. Like, oh man, okay, this is why I love it. this story. Yeah. I love it. Then I love how it tied in. So it got me excited. And yeah. then this, I was edge of my and the Clone War cartoon, the last season. And the then last the edge of your seat right here, watching the whole man. And she's like, Why are you like that? I thought you want a fan. I was like, No, this is just good storytelling. This yeah. is the way you do stuff. This is awesome. Have you watched Star Wars Rebels? Uh, parts. I have to watch what? it in sequence. I have, I have to watch it in it. sequence. So that last season of uh, of Clone Wars, Rebels, all that all ties in with Mando. It's fantastic. So Dave Filoni. Uh, John Favreau are unbelievable. There's another there show I would love to work with. There you go, guys. You heard again. Uh, John and all them at Marvel is right there. DavidSheftel.com yep. is where you need to go, all right, to contact this amazingly talented individual and keep growing that amazing web that he has. And uh, please, folks, again, tomorrow, February 12th, we're going to see him in Willie's Wonderland. You know, with Nicholas Cage, you heard him. He's gonna tie up Nick Cage. Woo! Oh man, I I I I'm praying for your character's safety in the film. <laughs> I appreciate that. Me too. Hopefully, hopefully, I make it to the end. Oh man, it's amazing. I really appreciate your time, brother, because uh, I know it's limited and, and you're you doing the gig. And I want to get this round immediately. I need people to share. Let them know again. So, you mind verbally stating where people could look up your work or where they could follow you at? Yeah, so please go to davidsheftel.com and follow me on all my handles, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, at David Sheftel. That's D-A-V-I-D-S-H-E-F-T-E-L-L. -L. It's two L's at the end. So thank you so much, Al. You're wonderful. No, man, I appreciate you giving me the time here today. And folks, visit the website as well, willieswonderlandmerch.com. So you got some exclusive looks at the film. There's a lot of good stuff going on there, all right? And again, it's tomorrow, February 12th. Whip, I can't wait to watch this film. Me right. too. Yeah, we didn't get a tease. That's the biggest tease we got was this trailer. And, and now I'm edge of my seat waiting for after work tomorrow, crack a beer and enjoy some Willie's Wonderland. Me and and be on the lookout for my homie here, David Sheftel. Again, thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate it. All thank right. You. So with that, mi gente, I'm Al Mega with the, again, amazing David Sheftel. Thanks for tuning in today. I appreciate it. And I, you know what I'm going to say, right? Where, Papa, que tu sepa, it's Omega. And hasta la próxima. Bye.